All right, we're at Hiker Trailer Factory in Indiana, and I have Jordan with me. And you have a new way of doing the power supply with a portable power solution these days. Correct. Um, we have partnered fairly heavily with Goal Zero. Um, so with it, we've gone to their portable power stations. Um, we like this option because, for one, it gives you the versatility to, you know, power your trailer mm -hmm. but you know for example last night around here there were some pretty nasty storms yes. so with this unit if you know power went out at home you could have went out grabbed this out of your trailer if it was already charged up taken it inside and used it to power phones lights whatever you would have needed correct yep so you know and the other option too is you know if you're going to leave your trailer somewhere as base camp for the day and you want to go take your tow vehicle somewhere well now you can just take this out with one simple plug take it with you and use it for whatever you need while you're gone um, it charges a lot quicker than most standard batteries, especially with solar power. So there's there's just a lot of great things to it that I, I feel like this is the new future versus onboard batteries. Correct. Yep. All right. So this can be charged either by the campground power or by solar, correct? That's correct. Yeah. So it, obviously it will charge much, much faster plugging it in at a campground. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, depending on how much power they're pushing out of the campground, um, this thing can take anywhere, I think it says from like 25 hours to charge it fully if it's completely dead. That's depending on the size of the oh, unit wow. yeah. because I have one that's their 200 model, which is very, very small mm -hmm. versus your guys's, which is, you know, a few steps up around the thousand to where they make them up to power homes. So right. they go very large. You know? What sizes do you guys offer for your clients? Um, I mean, honestly, we offer any um, okay. sizes because we, we sell them all online at the hiker trailer yeah. store. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the biggest one that I've seen anybody purchase at this moment for their trailer has been a 1500. That is the most common because that's going to be the most comparable to our 100 amp hour lithium. Ah, okay. um, we personally have bought and used up to the 3000 mm -hmm. um you get into this thing's huge yeah I, I mean it comes with its own cart to roll around it's, it's got a <laughs> cart with wheels on it to roll it around because it's big it's heavy mm -hmm. um so it, it needs some way to transport but i've seen the 6000 in person and you know they just they get crazy <laughs> that's uh, house level right you yeah. don't need that so, for a little trailer like this <laughs> yeah i'm thinking for most people the 1500 is probably going to be the solution okay. it's going to be the way to go it's got a 2000 watt inverter in it mm, nice um the power that it puts out will be plenty to power anything on your trailer, even if you decide to do your own additions. So, so let's back up a second. You said mm -hmm. it's got a 2000 watt inverter. Explain what that means to people. So with the 1500, which is what I think will be the most common, mm -hmm. um, your guys' unit here is a thousand. Mm -hmm. So the thousand model that you guys have, have a 1500 watt inverter. So, you know, most people when they got our onboard batteries previously, mm -hmm. the inverters we offered were 600 watts. Okay. So moving up to a thousand or the 1500, going to a 1500 watt or a 2000 watt inverter, now you're going to be able to power more things like your coffee makers or mm -hmm. which uh, that's know. what a lot of people are trying to do Correct. with their coffee yeah. makers in the morning coffee makers and CPAPs those yes. are probably the two biggest things that mm -hmm. most people use um, 600 watt inverter you know if you get my onboard battery station and then you want to upgrade an inverter mm -hmm. you might as well have just got a goal zero because inverter prices can get fairly expensive if you want a nice one and especially if you move to a thousand or two thousand mm -hmm. watt inverter now it's all built in. It's, built right it's, in. it's not an extra component in your trailer taking up space True. in here. You now have more storage space. Um, so again, just overall, it just seems like a better option and people are responding really well. Mm -hmm. So how does this actually all work? Um, so basically here we have all the input charging. Mm -hmm. um, pretty standard eight millimeter plug will go in here. That's what the power supply is that comes with the okay. charge. Yep. That's what a lot of uh, other companies use too. You guys have a Renogy 100 watt flex panel on the top of mm -hmm. your trailer. So what we've done is we've taken and adapted that to be able to charge your guys' station. Nice. Um, Goal Zero does offer options too. So if you guys ever wanted to purchase a portable panel in the future, um, or if you know customers who are renting this from you guys have Goal mm -hmm. Zero stuff and they have portable panels, well, they can use it with it too. Um, but we've taken and basically put what Goal Zero has. It's called their uh, HPP port for solar charging. Uh, we just adapted that to the Renogy. So they plug in. Now, do all of your Goal Zeros have the ability to be connected to solar power? Yes. Yeah, they all have the ability to be plugged into uh, solar power, um, whether you want to do permanent or portable mounts. Okay. Um, even with the uh, SAE plug that we used to do on the outside for like onboard batteries, mm -hmm. you can get that option too if you want to be able to keep this in your trailer, use a portable panel outside the trailer. We have that option. Um, so that's for the inputs. Over here, a lot of people are still using like a standard 12 volt cigarette lighter plug. Mm -hmm. um, that's what a lot of the customers get, but. So you can wire it that way. Oh yeah, I can wire it either way. Um, that's definitely plenty to handle what you want to do. Um, 
but they also have the Anderson plugs here. Mm -hmm. um, the, there is a difference between them. So the difference between them is gonna be the Anderson plug can actually use more power than the 12 volt plug as far as it can it can handle more uh, output. Okay. Um, so if you, you know, you're somebody that plans on doing a ton of electrical additions to your trailer, mm -hmm. this is gonna be the better option for you. Um, it does depend on the unit, how much this can handle. You know, the 1,000 that you guys have doesn't push out as much power through this as the 1,500 Correct. and then the 3,000, so on and so forth. Um, so it really just depends on what you're looking to do with your trailer. But for anything that we do as a standard, mm -hmm. um, the 12 volt can handle it. But this Anderson plug, it's a little bit more secure. Um, it definitely yeah. clicks in and oh, it's yeah. not going to get bumped out or jiggle out when yeah, you're going it's not gonna, the road. You know, it's not going to move out or bounce around. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we recommend when you travel anyway um, to kind of unplug this, don't have anything plugged in, okay. just, just so the way you don't take the chance of damaging any wires. But if you were to happen to forget, you know, this is definitely going to stay more secure than that 12 volt plug definitely. will. Definitely. Yep. We found that with our fridge. Right. That the 12 volt can jiggle around oh, and yeah. work its way out over time. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then, you know, the Goal Zero itself, you can control and see a lot of things directly from it um, as far as how much power you have left, how many amps you're pushing out, watt hours, um, all that good stuff. You can see that directly from the unit. Mm -hmm. They also have an app that you can get that you can see all that directly from the app. Um, so there, there's a lot of cool things to this thing. So will that register with the voltmeter that's inside of the trailer? It will. Um, it's not going to be as accurate. Um, so... You this know, is the best place to look to see you know, if, batteries, yeah. yeah. If you're really concerned about that, I would highly recommend using the direct display here or mm -hmm. using the app on there. Okay. Um, it also has abilities to charge your phone. It's got a couple USB A's, a couple USB C's. And then it's also got here a couple uh, standard wall plugs. So nice. AC outlet here for, uh, in this model, a 1500 watt inverter okay. to power coffee makers, CPAPs, things of that nature. So when we have this plugged in, your power strip that you got in the back of the trailer, that's being powered also, correct? So you would have to plug the power strip into here oh, uh, okay. to be able to power that power strip if you're looking to have more plugs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just be mindful of what you're using. Uh, coffee makers may not seem like they use a lot of power, but the they research do. that I've done, they, they do use mm -hmm. a lot of power. Um, yep. So yeah, you'll want to be careful. And that's the nice thing too is the goal zero. It's all internally fused, protected. Um, so it's, it's a fairly safe option to use. Pop on the 12 volt power on the Goal Zero unit, and then up here on your guys' trailer specifically, you guys had requested that we put leads for an onboard battery um, as well as a power option for the Goal Zero. So you have a two channel kill switch. Um, so we're just going to pop this on to the channel for the Goal Zero. So now we actually have power to the trailer. Um, we can turn on lights, and all your fans and everything are now powered directly from the Goal Zero. If you decided that you wanted to do an onboard battery, you're just going to simply flip it over to channel one, and then that's going to power everything in the trailer for you. Perfect. All right, so the shore power part, so we plug it in on the side, and the power comes in, and you've got two parts here. So why do you have two coming out? So what we've done is this plug here is actually currently for the power strip that I discussed that's mm -hmm. on the back wall. Yep. So what you could do is you could be plugged into shore power, and have your power strip plugged in. Because if you just have the power strip plugged in, mm -hmm. that's not powering the, like the lights and the fan and all of that, correct? Correct. So with that, the fact that the power strip doesn't power the rest of the trailer, mm -hmm. can we power the Gold Zero from that other little, that other extension cord? Yeah, yeah, if you just wanted to leave power strip plugged into one and just always leave your Gold Zero charger plugged into here and you know, maybe just like, Mount it up or something in there so it's always there. Anytime that you're plugged into shore power, as long as your goal zero is plugged in charging and then also mm -hmm. plugged in to power your trailer, you're essentially at that point just running power through shore power, charging your goal zero at the same time while also maintaining your trailer power. Okay. And then you need to have the Anderson plug plugged into the goal zero so that powers the rest of the trailer. That's correct. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, thanks a lot. That was very helpful to get a better understanding of how that all works. Of course, yeah, not a problem at all.